All right, so I wanted to give a quick overview of um, IPy widgets and of um, Voila, which is a dashboarding solution for Jupyter. Um, so a few of us, uh, myself uh, and a few others here, were at the um, dashboarding workshop last week in Paris. So there's sort of three main um, dashboarding solutions right now in the Jupyter ecosystem. Um, there is Dash, which is closely connected with the Plotly development. Uh, there's Panel, which is connected quite closely with Bokeh uh, and that ecosystem of tools. And then there's Voila, which integrates really nicely with the, the Jupyter ecosystem. And I would say is probably the most general of the three at the moment. Um, so, but before we get there, I want to just give a quick overview of IPy widgets um, in case you're not familiar. If you are, um, then hopefully I'll show you an interesting example of a science use case of IPy widgets. Um, so what IPy widgets do is let you um, basically connect um, JavaScript widgets to your code. So here I've got a simple example where we're just going to plot a sine curve. Um, and so see if we plot the sine curve with frequency of one, you get one cycle uh, over this range that I'm showing you. Um, but now perhaps we want to actually just have a look and see what happens if you change the frequency. So here I'm using the interact function. Um, and we're just going to provide it a function and then uh, a value. And so in this case, the value that I'm providing for f, which is the frequency, is, is, a, um, is an int. Uh, and so I get out uh, an int slider. So interact basically looks and says, this thing's an integer. Um, let's, let's give you integer values for that. If I instead made this um, a float, then we get out a float slider. So it's doing that type inference for you, um, which is quite nice. So this is a, a simple little example. Maybe we want to do something a little more um, and explore perhaps the connection with the sine curve um, to the unit circle. And so this starts getting into, if you're explaining complex numbers and things like that, what's going on. So I wrote another little function where we're just going to plot now the unit circle with the sine wave. And so now we've got um, two sliders because I've provided it two different inputs. We can change the frequency and then we can actually look and go and see basically if we're mapping a, cur a point on the curve on the sine curve, uh, where it actually falls on, on the unit circle. So you can see like pretty quickly, you can start actually building up some reasonably complex visual visualizations. Um, so that was using the interact with just the type inference and it's figuring out bounds that are somewhat reasonable for these values. But maybe I want to do something a little more fine grained um, and actually provide a different range. So here you can see the, the frequency bounds that I have are basically you know, two on either side. So maybe I wanted to actually give you something a bit broader, go up to 10, uh, 10 hertz. So here you can actually then go in and provide whatever um, specific widgets you want from the widgets library uh, and have that build up. So in this case, now my frequency range goes up to 10. Um, so for this specific example, um, we, we have those um, constraints. So the next thing I want to show you is actually some work um, that we did, that I did last week, um, building up an example. So my background is geophysics, um, and so I solve a lot of PDEs. Um, and so this example we're going to look at is a DC resistivity example. So there's a whole bunch of different functions I have here, setting up an array for a survey, um, design a mesh for my simulation, um, build a synthetic model, all of these sorts of things. And so at the end of the day, what I have is some sort of app that I built. So I now wire these up um, and we can go in and start simulating, simulating data. Um, but as you see, there's a whole bunch of code here that is a bit um, perhaps intimidating if I actually want to just pass this off to a student um, to have them learn about geophysics from that. So instead, it might be nice to basically have just a single view that, that's showing this. So this is where voila comes into play. Um, so what I'm going to do here is this notebook is in this repository here. So if I just launch with a voila server, um, then it's going to pop up uh, a much simpler view on this. So this is like an app view of, of my notebook. So here it's this DC forward simulation um, that I have up and running. Um, and so the Voila server is going to launch it. Oh, my screen is a bit cut off. One sec. Um, and so now we actually have this app just as a nice view running in my uh, web browser. And so what I can do um, is let's play around with this. So we've got um, a model here where we've got basically a half space Earth. So let's make it a bit more interesting. So let's add, add a couple layers. Um, we're going to insert a conductive layer. And you can see um, that's going to update the data. So it's kind of interesting, our, our data changed. I wonder what's going on there. Uh, 
And so one of the things that we can do is like, we're looking at the model right now. Let's maybe look at the current. So if we look at the currents, we're gonna isolate uh, a single um, electrode pair. And so you can see one electrode is injecting current, the other one's picking it up. Um, and when they're really close together, we're sort of sampling near the surface. And so um, this apparent resistivity value that we see is actually pretty close to, to the apparent resistivity or to the true resistivity of that first layer. And as we spread them further apart, um, then we get currents deeper. Um, and so you start to see this more conductive layer beneath that. And so what's actually going on under the hood? There's a few interesting things, like with this specific example, when I change the model, I'm actually rerunning a PDE simulation. So you can hook up widgets to live code. And so what Vla is doing is it provides you a kernel uh, that holds the state and is actually running that computation. As a user, all I have uh, is the ability to interact with the kernel through this interface. And so this can be nice if you actually want to deploy an app where you don't want users executing arbitrary code. Because um, the notebook is great at having users execute arbitrary code, that's what it's designed to do. Uh, but you don't necessarily want that in all cases. Um, and so voila separates those concerns and the voila server basically only lets the user um, provide inputs through this interface. Um, so I wanted to just show a couple resources um, where you can get connected with the project. So Sylvan uh, wrote a blog, which I believe was just published yesterday. And so this is on the Jupyter blog. Uh, so you can take a look. There's some useful links in there and some other demos and things like that that you can connect to. Um, and I think there'll be one coming out hopefully in the next week or so that's about the workshop and, and some of the products that came out of that. Um, then the other thing I wanted to show is the uh, Voila Gallery. So this is, uh, will be live at this URL soon-ish. Um, and so this is a handful of different examples um, that have been put together from, from last week and assembled online. Uh, so you can go in and start playing with these. So if you go to this URL right now, it probably will not work, um, but, but coming soon. Yes, that is a typo. So that is me faking the URL. <laughs> it's voilagallery.org. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so this is this is one of the examples where um, you know, uh, um, where you can go in and see um, country indicator data um, for for different um, sectors and things like that. So this is again a Matplotlib example, but there's others that'll be plugged in that use um, different plotting, interactive plotting engines, and, and things like that as well. Um, yeah, so with whatever minutes I have left, um, feel free to ask questions. Go ahead. Oh, uh, what kernels do you support? This is connected to basically anything that, that Jupyter's connected to. So you should be able to, I know that Sylvan's launched C++ examples. Um, so it, it should, should work out of the box. With it seems like a, every kernel. You yeah. opt in for Shiny? <clears throat> uh, you know, R is Shiny. What's happening with the rest of the cells that are not being the dashboard? So it does run. It does run the the notebook. So it runs the whole notebook, and then whatever, then it runs it once. So that's why it sort of took a minute when I first launched it. It runs the whole thing, and then because Exactly. Well, and because the only output cell that I had in that notebook was the last one. Now, there are tools, so there's, you can adjust what's shown through templates. So if, for example, I wanted to look at a whole bunch of intermediate steps, but only show the user the app at the end, you can take care of that through a template. No, it would show, it'll show the whole, it'll show all the outputs. Okay, so just all the outputs. Yeah. I think this is like basically what you already said, so it's a funny stupid question. So it's not correct to think of this as sort of thing that just strips out everything besides the outputs, or I guess I mean because that was like sort of like the middle model I had like the examples and oh there's this output cell that has this JavaScript widget, but then like you start with just stripped everything out from the notebook besides that. That's, there's more going on. <coughs> 
That's not a bad mental model. So it basically, I mean, to get this view, it did strip out, it used NB convert to strip out the code. You can keep the code in there. So that's one piece, that's what, how you get the view. But the, the kernel itself is also different. Um, or like the server, sorry, the voila server is different, is it's not gonna let the user send arbitrary code to it unless you explicitly put in a box that says enter code here. So there's, there's two different pieces. Is the, the view is different and then the server is different. That is beyond the depth of my knowledge. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is that. So basically, can you drop in a Walla server in the same configuration which might pass netline arguments to a Jupyter server? Yeah, it, it does integrate with the MyBinder instance. It's just a different URL. Um, URL. As long as you have it installed. Did you have a question? The same thing. So this, the gallery, this is supposed to be the general publishing mechanism for like when it, something wants to be public, and then it's using MyBinder in the bucket. This is a different. So UV set this one up. So I don't know if you want to say a couple. This is a Heroku app, correct? The Voila gallery. Um, no. Sort of a new thing we are trying out. Uh, there's an instance, there's a this is an extension to that that uh, basically lets you instantly launch a similar to my R, a list binder. So if you can launch the repos on the same node, so it's faster, uh, it's less flexible. Like there's a YAML file that defines which repos are available to be launched here. So I think it's useful for basically this use case where you want to show a particular set of repos and you want it to be fast and so you don't really care about the gentleness of that. So this is set up, this is set up with the little spider. So you could, you could publish to either, right? Okay. Yeah. We're making them right now. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <Photocrats> welcome. Nobody's going to ask me. Yes. The sponsor of the uh, If uh, we still want to show some pieces of the code to the users, is it possible to do? To mark yeah. Yeah. Um, so right now, the default when you run voila, there's a flag that goes in called strip source. Um, and so that's set to true, and you can just set it to false. So, so is it true for all the cells or just some uh, specific cells we are interested in? Uh, you, can, you can do that through a template. So if there's like a handful that you want, <laughs> Paul's laughing, because that was um, Martin's response last week, is, is everything, everything you want to do with Voila apparently can be solved through a template. But what you could do is basically tag um, metadata on like cell metadata, basically say, I want to show these handful, and then use the template to, to show just specifically those. Yeah, and I think that that's a great point, Chris, is uh, a lot of this is like early stages of development. So if you're playing around and have ideas of what you would want to see or how you would want this to be used, it's a great time to jump in and, and chime in. So this is intended to be like public, multi-user, not single user like the Jupyter server. <coughs> I mean, it would depend on the setup. Right now, like as Paul was saying, anytime you launch this, 
like a new kernel is spun up and, and run um, top to bottom. And so you could set up something like a binder um, to be multi-user, or uh, like support the multi-user use case better. Um, well, I guess, does it strip out all of the Jupyter server like token off and all that other business? Does it function like this we're running outside of any uh, outside of any binder? Yeah, I mean, so this, like, you can run it the same way as you run, like, JupyterLab or the Jupyter Notebook locally. So it's another way to view, um, to, like, it's another view on the notebook, effectively. So just so that, that can be invoked without any restrictions. Correct. Yeah. And is this the gallery? That's a different thing. That's, like, the... That's a gap. Yeah, yeah. But this this example, sorry, that I was running here, this is me just running voila on on my machine from the command line. So I think we're maybe playing a couple of the lines today. Yeah. 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 Yeah.